my name is Caitlin and this is my first floss tube video um, <clears throat> floss tube scratchy throat already might be a record um, I've been thinking about doing one of these for a while um, I mean I know there's so many floss tubers out there um, we don't really need another one um, but for the conversation was kind of starting to feel one-sided um, I love hearing about everything you guys are working on and uh, I just wanted to let you know what I'm working on um, and then I mentioned to Melanie um, who runs Soulful Stitching that I thought I was thinking about doing one and she was like you should go for it uh, so I am so I guess you know if, if no one ever watches this whatever <laughs> but here I am participating um, in the great conversation that is Floss Tube um, if you catch my drift I feel like I was so much more prepared before I pressed record and now I can't remember anything I was gonna say but luckily I have notes um, I hope you can hear me okay um, full disclosure I live in a big city in an apartment on the first floor so you might hear some out outside sounds um, which may or may not include traffic birds honking other people talking um, and my upstairs neighbors uh, footsteps we'll see how it goes um, okay so let's talk about stitching right um, July was so busy for us um, it was not great for stitching um, we moved um, and as anyone like I'm sure all of you know, any one of you who has moved, you know that moving is a several month process between looking and packing and moving and unpacking. Um, so that was a whole thing. Um, we're almost, almost unpacked. We just need to get our artwork um, up on the walls and uh, like our family photos and, uh, and decorations unpacked, <laughs> our little knickknacks and stuff and then we will be fully moved in. Um, but I did get a little bit done. So um, I had a couple finishes. Um, so this year I participated in the cross stitch finish line round robin. Um, and thank you, Joanne, uh, for organizing that. It was so much fun. I'm so glad I did it. I um, enjoyed every project I worked on and it was really neat to try um, some new designers that I never would have, I never would have, I never would have picked them up or like ordered them from 123 Stitch on my own. Um, so it was really neat to kind of like sample before you buy, I guess, uh, some of these designers and to try some different styles of projects that I, I would never pick for myself or for my home. Um, and to see these other ladies like wonderful stitching. Um, so the first, the first like finish I had was, um, I don't have it anymore because I already mailed it to the next person, um, but I will insert a picture here. These fingers are so I know in editing. Um, I'll insert a picture here <laughs> of what it is supposed to look like. It was a um, like a red, white, and blue quilt design by Ur Ursula Michael. Um, and then here is a picture of the section I did. And it was fun. Um, I would say that towards the end it got a little tedious. It got a little repetitive with the quilt blocks. This is probably not one, sorry, coffee. Um, this is probably not one I would pick up for myself, um, but it was cool to try one of her designs, um, and, um, yeah, it was like, I finished it around the 4th of July, so it was a fun little patriotic, uh, patriotic stitch. Um, and then I mailed it, and the next thing that came, um, that I worked on... I also finished, I have it here, sorry for the crinkling, I know people hate it, 
Um, I don't mind it, to be honest. So the next thing I worked on was Amber's project. Um, Amber from She's Crafting. I will try to remember to link her below. Um, and her project was Spring by the Cricut Collection. And this is another one. Um, you know, I've seen, of course, I've seen Joe and Jesse Marie do all the, um, the monthlies from the Cricut Collection. And I always thought, wow, those are really pretty, but not for me, you know. Um, and then, I mean, primarily because we live in a small apartment, I don't, uh, seasonal, seasonal decor is not really something I have a lot of space for. Um, we, yeah, we just don't have room to have like spring decorations and summer decorations and fall decorations and winter decorations. I have a small amount of Christmas decorations and that's it. So if I stitch something seasonal, it's probably Christmas related. Um, so I never thought I would want to do one of these. And now I'm kind of rethinking that and trying to figure out how I can get, um, get some space in my life to have maybe some of these Cricut, uh, collection, monthly collections, um, because this was a lot of fun. These colors are so vibrant, um, and, um, I hope you can see it okay. Um, yeah, so this is the part I did, um, it was the S, um, the Robin is adorable, um, I, this is a hat here, which when I was stitching it, I couldn't figure out what it was. I thought, it, I was like, what is this, a spaceship? No, it's a hat. Um, that's really cute. I love the snail. I love the flowers. I love the stripes. I love all the colors that are in this. Um, I don't know, Amber, you might not get it back. <laughs> no, just kidding. I'm going to pop this in the mail to her tomorrow. Um, and that was the last leg of the round robin. So, um, and again, Joanne, thank you. I won't say her last name because I don't have her permission, but I'm sure she knows who she is. Thank you so much for organizing that. Um, it was great. Um, and then the third finish I had, it wasn't, it's not really a finish for me. It was my portion of the round robin. Um, I got it back. Uh, Janice, um, at the Northern Stitcher, who I will also try and link below, um, she finished, she, you know, this was like the last section of it and she finished, um, the last part of it super quickly and mailed it to me, um, and I got it in the middle of July and, um, I'm, kind, I'm counting it as a finish, you know, because it is a, a finished object. It just needs to be framed. So for my portion of the round robin, I, I chose um, Soda Stitches Ice Cream Cats. Um, and this is how it turned out. Let's see if I can fold this way so you can get a little... Um... Aren't these so adorable? The part, I stitched the bottom part of each of these cats and then there were six of us and the round robin and the rest of the women each stitched the rest of the cat. Um, they're super cute. Um, this is stitched uh, two over two on African Daisy Joblin. Um, it looks like I might, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to get this framed this month and up on my wall as soon as possible because I love these. I'm so happy to have them home and uh, I can't wait to get them in like maybe a pink frame or something cute like that and up on my wall. I'm a total cat lady so anything cat related I love. Uh, I also love ice cream. When I saw this pattern on Etsy from Soda Stitch I knew that it was literally made for me. Um, and I ordered it and I'm so thrilled to have it done and it's kind of cool that uh, <laughs> it was done for me um that's kind of cool and it's cool that um I'll have like a I'll have like a memory that doesn't make any sense I should probably edit this part out uh anyway I'm glad <laughs> I'm glad it's uh I'm glad it's done and I can't wait to get it framed um so let's move on to whips so I have I know so this is the first time we're talking and you don't know anything about me, so um, I'll let you know that I have 12 active whips. I have no inactive whips. Um, I used to kind of just stitch what I wanted when I wanted 
and try and finish things before I started them. Something new, before, like before I started something new, I tried to uh, make myself finish what I was working on and I noticed that I was getting easily bored that way. I think that my tolerance for a project is about seven days of working on it and then I need a break and I need to work on something else. So um, after we moved, uh, I took that opportunity to change my routine. It's new, new surroundings, new routine works out pretty well. So I started, um, I started to give each of my whips a one week rotation and I'm just going to work through each of the 12 whips, give them each, a, give them each a week. And, um, anytime I finish something, I will put a new start in that project slot. So, uh, the round robin, um, was one of those whips. And, um, when I come back around to that, time that like slot in the rotation I will start something new um, I don't know what that will be yet I'm waiting I'm waiting on some stash to come in the mail before I decide I'll talk about that later everybody's favorite part right not everybody but a lot of people I think favorite part is uh, is the stash positions um, what was I talking about um, rotation so yes anyway this is a great time for um, my neighbor to turn on his motorcycle. You hear that? Great. Maybe we'll cut that out later. Um, okay, so whip report. Um, so the first thing I worked on after, I think, after the round robin was finished um, was... Technically, so technically the name of this chart is ABC du, Bo, du Bois, or ABC du Forêt, it's French. Um, I will insert a picture here. Of what it's supposed to look like. Um, and there's like a little bit of a story behind this. Um, so basically... I had this fabric, um, this navy Lugana, and um, this DMC 680, um, 680 thread um, that I had originally intended to use to do Stitch Rovia's Key to My Heart, um, which I'm sure you've all seen, so I won't put a picture in. I was planning on doing it as a wedding gift for one of my friends who's getting married in September because their colors are navy and gold. And I put like four stitches into the pattern and then we went on vacation and I, um, I must have been on Facebook. I must, must have been on Stitch Mania where all, where all haul starts, right? <laughs> on Stitch Mania. And somebody posted a picture of, I don't remember which comic book characters it was, but two comic book characters with like the little heart above it. Um, that Clouds Factory does, you know, the little limbless people. You know, they have the couple, um, the little limbless couple, and there's like a little white box with a heart over them, and they had turned it into a wedding sampler. And I thought, oh my god, this girl loves Batman, loves Batman. She put Batman stamps on her wedding invitations. She has a Batman tattoo. She has a million Batman themed everything. She's always loved Batman. Um, and I'm sure the selection of navy and gold for her wedding colors came from a love of Batman, right? So I, um, I thought, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be better and like more personal, even though Key to My Heart is a really, it's a beautiful pattern and it's not impersonal. It just doesn't, it's, there's nothing specific about them as a couple that, um, that like, there's, it doesn't say anything about them as a couple specifically. It's just a pretty, a pretty pattern that, you know, um, is about love and, and can be used as a, as a wedding sampler. Um, so I thought, wouldn't it be better if I did something Batman themed for her, for her wedding sampler? Um, and so 
I decided to scrap key to my heart. I pulled out the four stitches I had in there, but I really, I had really liked the way that TMC 680, um, which is this gold color, looked on the navy Lugana. So I wanted to use this color combination um, for a different project. Um, so I started, um, so I was looking through my like downloads and my patterns and I realized that I had um, some months ago downloaded a bunch of freebies from Brodery.net which I'll link below and they're all these gorgeous, I, I don't know if it counts as red work, I think they're cross stitch patterns, they're primarily done in red and white on like a neutral linen is what she charged them for, but they're like single color patterns um, and so I picked this one, um, ABC du Forêt my French accent. I have a very, uh, I have a, it's not so great, right? <laughs> Anyone, any European listening to it is probably cringing right now. So basically I, I chose this design and, um, I've been working this, let's see, um, sorry about the parked threads. Um, so I'm almost at the top, um, of the design of this tree. Um, oops, it's harder to do than I thought. Um, and then there's these two deer down here, and um, as you would have seen in the picture, there's like a reflection of them. I decided not to do the alphabet that's up here. I think it's kind of weird and random. Um, and I don't know. I don't know how I'm feeling about this. I mean, I don't know if I love it. I love the colors together. I really love this like mustard and navy combination, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, if I'm just not far enough along in the pattern, um, maybe it's like not really that great of a pattern. I, you know, I'm not sure, <clears throat> I'm not sure how I feel about it. Um, I will probably keep going on it the next time it comes up in my rotation. And then I guess at that point I might as well just finish it. I don't know. I may, I'm going to keep going on it and see how I feel, but I, I don't know. I don't really like love these branches here. Um, and I'm not sure how I feel about like this deer's like their noses. Um, so maybe I don't know. Should I keep going? I have to think about it. Because I do, I do like the color combination, and I think the finished product will be nice. But you know, of course, as soon as I got this far, I thought, oh god, you know what I really should have done is I should have done this pattern like in DMC 310 on some beautiful hand dyed, you know, fabrics by LJ piece of fabric, like as like a silhouette, you know. Um, and maybe that's why I don't like it. Maybe this isn't the right fabric and color combination for this piece. I don't know. But anyway, that's where I am. Um, on I'm not calling it ABC to Fire. I'm calling it, you know, oh dear. Um, I'm a little punny like that. You know, I'm calling it my oh dear project. Um, so that's that. The next thing I worked on, um, so I saw this posted in Stitch Mania. Somebody posted their progress of it, and then I think they posted their finished finished product, and as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh my god, I have to have that pattern. Um, so I immediately put it in my 1-2-3 stitch wish, wish list. Don't, don't say that three times fast. Um, and the next time I needed to order floss, I, um, because it was like colors they didn't have of Michaels or something like that, because uh, our local Michaels suck and our, they never restock their DMC and um, they just, they're awful. Um, anyway, so I had to order some floss, so I figured, well, that poor floss can't travel alone. It should travel with a pattern. So um, I got this. Prairie Schooler, Where There Are Bees. Um, this is, I love this. It's adorable. Um, and, um, I was never like, I'm not, I'm not, I've never been like really into bees. Um, I'm not anti-bee, you know, but I was not, I was not pro-bee. I was just very neutral, neutral bee. 
until recently and then I don't know what happened I don't know if it was just seeing that one stitcher's progress on this pattern like I don't know if it was this this pattern that um that drove me into Pro B, or it might have been that I've been watching a lot of, um, sorry, the back of it, um, that I might have been watching a lot of uh, Bendy Stitchy, Michelle, who is very Pro B. Um, so all of a sudden, lately, I'm super into bees. Um, I now have like three B patterns to stitch, and I catch myself scrolling eBay looking for more B patterns. I don't know. I don't know what the deal is with that. Um, but anyway, um, so I got this. I was super excited to start it. And um, let me show you my progress on it. So I'm stitching this as charted with the call for threads. And the funny thing about these threads is, um, so when you, I mean, when you look at this, right, you're like, okay, so it's blue, a gold, a pink, and a, like a gray or brown. Um, there's only four colors in this chart, and those are the colors you would think. Um, so when I went to Michael's to pick up, I went to Michael's to pick up the DMC for this project, um, and I went to go grab the pink color. Um, so this is it, and I don't know, oh, wrong way. I don't know um, if you can tell my notes here like um I'm not sure how it's looking to you guys but when you go to the store and you look at 3772 you will see that it is in like a brown section like the colors the colors on either end of 3772 are brown there's no like they're definitely brown um, so I was standing in Michael's and I was like, there's looking at this skein and saying like, this is brown. This is not pink. There's no way this is the right color. I must have, I must have written it down wrong. So I like went onto the one, two, three stitch website and you know how, when you go to buy a pattern, they have like the checklist on the side of the floss colors for it. Gosh, my nose. I don't know what's going on. Sorry guys. Um, does this make me a real floss tuber that I'm like sniffing because I'm recording? I hope so. <laughs> um, it's probably because I'm sitting on the floor. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, so anyway, I, so anyway, um, I was like, this is, this is brown. This is not, this is not pink. So I, um, I checked the one, two, three stitch website and I looked at the floss list they had for this pattern and I was like, Oh, 3772. Okay, 3772. Maybe 123 Stitch has it wrong. Maybe I wrote it down from the website and they had it wrong and that's why I'm wrong. So I called my husband and I said, I need you to go to my stash. I need you to pull out this pattern and I need you to read me the floss colors on the back. Uh, and he did. And again, 3772. And so I had him read it again and then um, I had him text me a picture of it. And uh, I thought... I don't know what you're doing, Prairie Schooler, but this seems wrong. Like, there's no way that this color is this beautiful pink. No way, right? Uh, so I, just in case, I brought home a couple skeins of some other pinks, planning to, like, substitute it out. So I got it home, and I started stitching it, and I thought, you know what? I'll stitch it as charted, um, and I'll, I'll just see. And if it's not working, I'll substitute it out. And wouldn't you know it, um... It looks great. Like, it totally looks pink. Um, so I don't know. Like, my bad, Prairie Schooler. Um, I'm getting a text. Like, uh, my bad, Prairie Schooler. I, um, I don't know why I doubted you. You know what I mean? Like, this, um, this looks great. This color combination is on point. Um, I love it. I love everything about it. Um, so this is as far as I got in one week. Um, I, I love this project so much. It was really hard to put it down. I, I can't wait. Um, I can't wait till this comes back up in my rotation. Um, I'm going to be good and I'm going to wait, uh, the like 10 weeks or whatever it is for it to come back up. But I, 
really, really love it. And I cannot wait to finish this and hang it in my kitchen. Um, I'm stitching it um, two over two on 32 count Jobelin, um, which was the called for fabric using the called for threads. Um, and they are great. I love it. So, um, and Prairie Schooler, by the way, is one of those, you know, when I was talking about with the round robin, I talked a little bit about this with the round robin, about how there was designers that I never would have tried if it wasn't for the round robin. And Prairie Schooler is one of those designers. Like, I always saw other people's progress and thought, oh, that's nice, um, but never really thought any of these, any of their patterns would be for me. Um, and then during the round robin, somebody, um, somebody chose the Prairie Schooler Woodland Creatures, um, and that stitched up so fast and it was so fun you know just enough color changes um their patterns are great and now i can't get enough prairie schooler so there you go and robin was uh very educational so the next thing i've been working on um is the um the wedding gift i was talking about um for my friend who loves batman um and so i was trying to think i knew i wanted to use the clouds factory bat, bat like batman pattern they're little limbless, uh, they're little like limbless people. Um, but I was trying to figure out how to make Batman wedding themed. Um, I'm no comic book man. I'm no, I'm no like comic book or Batman or superhero expert, but I do know that Batman doesn't really have like a love of his life. I wouldn't necessarily, I mean, I guess Catwoman is his girlfriend, but I wouldn't necessarily call that a healthy relationship. You know, I wouldn't want any of my friends to model their marriage on um, Batman's relationship with Catwoman. So I was like, how do I make this like solitary character who doesn't love anyone <laughs> wedding themed? Um, and the more I thought about it, the more I thought about um, maybe it's not like a wedding themed thing. Maybe it's a family themed thing because... Um, so this friend, her fiance has a son, um, has a little boy. And so not only is she becoming a wife, but she's becoming a stepmom. Um, and she's very excited about it. She's been in this little boy's life for a long time. Um, she already kind of is a stepmom, but you know, when they, when they unite in marriage, she'll, she'll be officially, officially a stepmom. Um, so I thought maybe Maybe it's not like a piece about her wedding. Maybe it's a piece about um, this family coming together. Um, and I thought, you know, um, there's three of them. And um, why not do Batman, Robin, and Batgirl? Um, and, uh, you know, write something about, um, about them being like a trio or a team or something like that at the bottom. I haven't quite figured out the words. But so this is what I've done so far. Let's put this behind there. Um, so I'm stitching this uh, two over two on Picture This Plus Haunted. Um, and so far I've got uh, Robin 100% done um, and I'm working my way through Batman. Um, and so I'm gonna do Batgirl on this other side. Um, and I'm gonna put their family name up here and write something like, you know, dynamic trio since their wedding date or something like that um, at the bottom. Um, and because Robin is supposed to represent their son, I wanted to make him a little bit smaller than the other two. So what I did is I made Robin, um, I made him two rows thinner, like I shaved off a row on either side of his body. And then I made, I'm making Batman and Batwoman two rows thicker and two rows taller. Um, so they'll be still proportional um, in size, like they'll still be proportional, um, but they will be just slightly physically bigger than Robin. Um, I thought about doing him over one um, to make him like half the size, but um, I mean, when I, when I was thinking about it, I kind of realized that he'd be like this little tiny ball and they would be like this size and he would just really look like a tiny midget person and not like a child. So um, this is, this is what um, we're doing for that. Um, so um, there's that. And then um, I have one more rip to show you, which I need to uh, pause the video for and uh, go get it and come back. It's gonna be a lot of cuts in this.
And so my last whip, um, let's scoot closer. Whoa. So my last whip, um, this is my travel project um, that I keep in my purse and I work on when I'm on the subway or um, when I'm on my lunch break at work sometimes I have, you know, 30 minutes or whatever to stitch. So um, this is by Stitch Line. Um, and I think that the name of this pattern is um, just Tigger Silhouette or something like that. I got it on Etsy. Um, I won't insert a picture because you can basically see what it is. Um, so basically it's just a uh, silhouette of Tigger from Winnie the Pooh. And inside it says, um, like, life is not about how fast you climb. Um, or about, it, it says, life is not about how high you climb, climb or about how fast you run, but how well you bounce is what it will say. Um, so I have, you know, uh, what I have left to do is I have to come down here and do the rest of his butt and his tail, and then I have to do his arms. Um, I'm stitching this one over one on 28 count peach cameo Lugana. Um, it looks a little bit more orange in real life than it is looking here. Um, this is just a scrap of fabric I had in my stash. Um, I may fill in these letters with a teal color later. I'm using um, Rainbow Gallery Silk Splendor threads for this, and I really don't like them. Um, I find that they fray really easily, that they pull, um, that they that they get like really thin as you're working with them, no matter how easy I try and go on my tension. Um, they're inconsistent in width and they get knotted super easily. So I'm not liking them. I had picked them up at a store um, at some point to try them. I don't, I don't recommend them. Uh, maybe some other people have had some different experiences. I think Emily C is using them right now um, on another project and I actually, I'm so behind on floss tube that I haven't followed up to see how she likes them. Um, but I remember her talking about that she bought them, was going to try them. So um, I'll have to see if I can uh, catch up on her videos to see how she feels. Maybe I just got a lemon, but I really don't like them. But anyway, I'm stitching this for my mom. Um, and this is just my travel project. I did put a spot in it, a rotation spot in it. I, no, I did give it a spot in my rotation. Uh, so it will get its own week at some point. But right now... Um, Right now, it's just for traveling. Um, this is kind of nice on the train to only have to worry about one color. Um, allegedly, this thread is washable, which is um, another reason I wanted to try it, because a lot of silk threads are over-dyed and not washable. So, I don't know. Um, so, it's coming along. Um, and that's it for whip, whip progress. Um, now let's talk about um, let's talk a little bit about plans. So um, for August, I know it doesn't seem like I did a lot of stitching, right? Like um, that's not that's not a whole lot for four weeks four weeks progress. I'm not it's not a lot for me. Um, but July's been really crazy. Work has been really insane. Um, the project I'm on right now is going to end on August 11th um, and it's going to start winding down next Wednesday. So on like the 9th it'll start winding down and then it'll be fully over on the 11th and then I might take a couple days off before jumping on to the next thing. Um, so I'm hoping August is a little bit better for stitching time. Um, now that we're settled in our new place and um, I'm hoping that work will be a little a little more I freelance um, and so does my husband we both freelance um, and so I'm hoping that it will be a little the work will be a little slower and that there will be less work <laughs> in August um, 
the summer tends to be a really, really crazy time for both of us. Um, right now he's working days and I'm working nights. I actually don't have to be at work until 7 p.m. tonight, um, which means I will get home from work at 8 a.m. Um, and he will probably have already left for work at that time. So um, it's a little hard to stitch when you're working in graveyard shifts, I think. Um, I tend to not have very much progress. But anyway, my plans are, um, so I'm gonna, for the rest of this week, I'm gonna work on Batman. Um, I'm going to try and get um, the characters at least finished, um, if not, if not the family name and the words and all that. I'm gonna try and get that done because their wedding is the beginning of September and it is now the beginning of August. So I really need to power through it and get it framed uh, and ready to go. And the next thing that's up in my rotation is my Heaven and Earth design. I own four Heaven and Earth designs, and I probably should have started this one before I bought any more. Um, because now that I'm into it, I'm I'm not sure I'm going to live long enough to stitch all four of these. Um, I do. I'm enjoying it. They're charted beautifully. I can't wait to have them all done and hanging on my wall. I just wish that I could clone myself so that I could get it done faster. Um, so the one I'm working on right now, I chose the one with the least amount of colors. Um, I think this has, how many colors does this have? It only has 15, 15, one five colors. Uh, so this is, I thought it would be a nice, a nice one to get my feet wet. Um, this is Echiscalibus? Echiscabalus, I think. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Um, the artwork by Stephen Paul Carlson, and it's this beautiful um, black and white sketch of a horse, this like Celtic border. Um, I am stitching this for my mom. This was my new year new start. Um, and I, I started this January 1st and I was like, oh yeah, I'll totally have this done for her for Christmas. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm almost done. I'm totally, totally almost done. I am halfway done with um, my first page. Um, so that's what I have so far. And this is, I'm not sure what page this is, but I actually am a center starter and I should have I'm a center starter and the problem with this design is um, that's like right here and all of this, um, all the white is not stitched. So the top, like the top row of pages is, um, is not full coverage. So I was, I was afraid to start from the top left because um, I was afraid of screwing up the count and screwing up the placement of the um, of the piece on the fabric so I decided to start in the center so the page I'm working on right now is this like little neck section um, so I think I have four rows oops sorry about the part threads I have four rows further to do in this page to get it finished um, I really love the way it looks this looks so good on camera um, I really love the way it looks but it is a labor of love, that's for sure. Um, I've, I'm doing it one over one on 28 count Whisper Lugana. Um, I did not want to do this piece on Magic Guide because, um, because of all the area that is not stitched. And I had this horrible fear that I would get some sort of lemon piece of Magic Guide and the lines wouldn't come out. Um, and I wanted to do it kind of on a gray colored fabric, not on a stark white. So I think it's going to look really beautiful when it's done. Um, like really, really beautiful. Like even just looking at it now, I'm really pleased with how that's looking. Um, but one over one on 28 count. Holy cow, is that small. Um, I haven't worked on this. I haven't worked on this since like February or March. I was trying to complete the 
challenge in the Heaven and Earth Designs Facebook group where it was like you had three months to stitch a full page or something like that. And um, I was doing pretty well and then I got to, I can't, I don't really know where it was now, but I got to a section on this where I was an entire row off. Um, it wasn't like, oh, it was an entire row off and I can fudge it. It was an, I was an entire row off and, um, and I had to, then there was going to be a gap if I left it. So I had to frog like 400 stitches and redo them. And after that, I was a little burnt out on it. And, um, so I put it away. So, but I am, um, I'm committing I mean, you guys got to hold me accountable now. That's why so I'm doing this. I'm committing to bringing this out next week um, on Saturday. Today's Monday, so I have a few days left to work on Batman, and then I'm going to pull this out, and I'm going to work on it for a week, and I'm going to try and get in at least 25 stitches every night, um, which I know is a pathetic amount compared to most of you, um, but that's kind of like, if I can just get in 25 every night, I'll feel like I've accomplished something um, by the end of the week, so... Um, I'm not going to set any lofty goals, but I'm just going to try and get some stitches in this this week. Um, because if I if I don't, I'm never if I don't work on this at least once every 12 weeks, I will never finish this. Um, I should probably be working on it more often. I'll see. Maybe I should bump this up in my rotation to to every other week or something like that. But um, right now, there's so many things I want to stitch. Um, and this is, this is definitely a labor of love, so, um, I'm already dreading it. I'm already dreading going back to it. Um, I know that once, once I get it on my frame and I'm set up, um, and I'm stitching with my magnifier, I'll be loving it. I'll have a great time. The hours will fly by and I'll be like super excited and get, you know, a hundred stitches done, uh, like no problem. It's just that right now that task feels <laughs> immense. Um, if you know what I mean. Um, and then the next thing I plan on working on, this is another one I haven't touched in a while. So, um, I started this pattern April of last year. This is my oldest whip. Um, I had originally intended to start it as a wedding sampler. Um, when I started this, I was new to cross stitch. I, I mean, I, I learned to cross stitch with my grandma when I was like young, but, uh, it didn't stick. And then, um, in like 2015, 16, I picked it back up as a hobby because I was looking for a way to relax. Um, my job is both physically and mentally demanding and, um, I have a hard time letting go of things when I come home from work and unwinding and so um, I was trying all these different hobbies trying to find something that would would help with stress and um, I picked up a cheap kit from Michaels and I did it and it was like that was it I was hooked um, sorry um, I was hooked on cross stitch um, and I had done a few smaller patterns and then I was looking for something for our wedding sampler and um, I found this pattern on Etsy and I will, um, I don't have a printed copy of it because it was a digital download, so I will insert a picture of it here. Um, and my intention, I chose this pattern, I chose this pattern um, because um, we, we're going to use a lot of, um, wax flowers and thistles in our wedding colors, um, in our wedding bouquets, you know, um, I had planned to use wax, these like pink wax flowers and the, like the blue thistles. Um, so that's why I chose this pattern after searching through Etsy for what seemed like years looking for something to use as our wedding sampler that felt right. Um, and I chose this and figured I would just leave the words out of the center and put our names and our wedding date and you know maybe something maybe a poem or something in there I'll figure that out later um and I should have um sorry I should have as soon as I opened the pdf download I should have 
just said, nah, it's not going to work and found something else. Um, this pattern is very badly charted. Um, the chart is like cut off in some places. Um, they use numbers, not symbols. Um, but the quality of the image is very low. Um, and for some reason it's sized weird. So, um, I couldn't print it out on eight and a half by 11 paper. I had to print it out on giant paper for it to me able to be, for me to be able to see it. They must have, they didn't chart these on eight and a half and 11 sized PDF pages. They, I don't know how this guy, I don't know how they charted this. It's, um, a it's, mess. trust me when I say it's, it's charted really badly. It's difficult to follow. Um, and also it is not a simple pattern. I thought when I bought the image that it would be simple. Um, it's not, it has like 40 colors. It's very confetti heavy. Um, so I was really struggling with it. And so this is, um, I'm going to show you how far I got before my plan was to get it finished before we got married and to maybe frame it and to have people sign the mat as a guest book. Um, that 100% didn't happen. I reached a point in, we got married in September. I started it in April. I reached a point in August where I knew it wasn't going to happen. And I put it aside, um, because I was mad at it, um, because I struggled with it also. Um, and this pattern is actually what brought me to floss too, because I was trying to figure out a way to stitch it faster and better. And like, I was just, it was not a novice pattern. So I was really struggling. Um, but this is as far to the park threads. This is as far as I got with it before I put it down. Um, I'm not even sure that I like how it's coming out, how it's turning out. I mean, um, I feel like how it's charted in here isn't great. Um, I'm not sure if that is due to me being a new stitcher at the time. I mean, I kind of like how this looks up here. I like the thistles um, and I like the pink flowers. Um, I guess from a distance, it looks pretty cute. Um, but so I got basically almost a quarter of the way done and then I put it away. This is, I think, um, it's really dirty. This is, um, I think this is an 18 count. It might be a 20 count, um, ivory Ada. Um, but anyway, so that's as far as I got. Um, and then I put it away and I put it away until April of this year. Um, I decided I was done being mad at it. Um, and I, I wanted to pull it out for Jessie Marie's birthday sale because it is my oldest whip. What are you doing? That's a cat back there. What are you doing? Go away. Yeah, go away. Um, so I wanted to pull it out for that. Um, the needle might have fell off somewhere in there. Um, um, but since then, you know, in a year I've grown, I had grown a lot as a stitcher. Um, when I started that project, I didn't know you could stitch on anything other than Ada. Um, and, um, when I came back to it, I decided that I wanted to, I wanted to restart it. I know. A quarter of the way done, I wanted to restart it. Um. So for Jessie Marie's birthday sale, I made a meager, um, a meager restart, um, and I'm doing it one, one thread over two on 32 count Silver Moon Belfast. Um, this is like, it's a little bit more blue in person, um, than you're getting on the screen, but this is just basically the top of the center flower. So that's all I have. Um, but I am liking the way it looks a lot better. Um, it's not this other stitches that I had done. I mean, like I said, I was new to cross stitching. They're really bad. They're really sloppy. They're really crammed. I had a horrible habit of instead of if I made a stitch, if I counted wrong, instead of ripping it out, I would stitch over it. I know. Um, so I think, I think this will be worth it in the end. Maybe not. Um, I'm one of those, I'm really stubborn. I don't like giving up on things. So I think that I will eventually finish this. It certainly won't be by our first anniversary um, because that's a month away. 
but it might be um, before our fifth anniversary. So maybe that will be its new goal. But um, this is another one where I'm just going to try and get in as many stitches as I can in a week. Um, and that's what it is. I think um, I'm going to do year of whips next year, and this is going to be a year of whips piece. So next year I'll have to like turn up, you know, turn up the volume on this and really get it done. But um, the colors are pretty. So that's something. I like the way it looks on the linen. So that's that. The next thing I'm going to work on in August sorry crinkling but if I don't crinkle now it'll never get put away um, the next thing I'm going to work on in August is another whip that's kind of old I also started this in the spring I also had some problems with it this is um, I mean you guys have all seen this but this is the coffee Quaker sampler that everybody's doing um, I got in on the hype I, um, oh God, lost two drippy nose. Um, I got in on the hype, um, and wanted, and I started this. Oh, I actually have a lot more done than I thought. Um, and started this as soon as I could get the pattern, um, from the Etsy seller. And, um, I didn't want to stitch it as charted because I had planned to hang this in my kitchen. And at the time, in the apartment we were living in, our kitchen was blue with red and yellow accents. Um, wouldn't you know it, the kitchen in our new place where we're living now, um, the colors is like these colors. It is brown and green um, and lighter brown. So the original charting would have gone nicer, um, but that's fine. I think, you know, this isn't our forever home. This is an apartment we'll live in for a few years. Um, and I love blue and I love blue and yellow and red together and a lot of the things we have in our life are that color so whatever it doesn't matter if it doesn't go in the kitchen I can hang it in the, hang it in the living room or in the bedroom who cares right um so anyway um this is how far I am which actually this is farther than I thought I was so that's that's uplifting uh I totally forgot I got that much done I actually this was another what is this oh this was another restart um because i started this this is i'm stitching this on 32 count summer sky joblin um one over two i started this two over two on a piece of this fabric that i got from one two three stitch and um ran out of room and i realized and I ran out of room because um, they had miscut it. It was like two inches shorter than it was supposed to be. And um, also it wasn't 32 count, it was 30 count. So I think they might have sent me a piece of 28 count fabric by accident. Um, so I sent it back to them and they sent me a new piece and it was the right size. And um, I believe, uh, so this is gonna fit. <laughs> cause I, this is definitely gonna fit. So, cause that's the bottom. And um, there's room at the top up here. So my video keeps cutting out. So not sure what's going on. I'll try and finish this up. The last thing I'm going to work on in August is you've all seen this before, um, but is my frosted pumpkin happily ever after sal. Um, woefully behind on it. I've gotten April and June done. That's it. Um, I would love to get to the top of January which I was at before, and then I had to frog a whole bunch of this flower border. Um, the border is adorable, but it is killing me. I spend a lot of time, scooch closer, a lot of time frogging it. Um, so um, I'm gonna try and get as far along as I can in that. The cat's in the background playing with things. Um, it's just the name of the game of August is to do get these wedding gifts done and then also to get as many stitches as possible into some of these projects um, that are almost UFOs at this point because I haven't touched them in so long. Um, so really quickly, let's talk about acquisitions. Um, I'm not gonna, I did get um, my Just Cross Stitch August 
in my cross stitch gold August I'm not gonna do a flip through on those because this is already kind of a long stop that this is already kind of a long video um, and I need to get ready for work um, so maybe we can do a flip through another time I'm sure most of you have seen the just cross stitch August um, the cross stitch gold um, I'm not gonna resubscribe to this it's the subscription is expensive and um, this is the first issue where I've actually found something I want to stitch in there this um, this owl clock I'll probably do at some point and then this um, this elephant I think is pretty um, but here's a bigger picture of it um, we love elephants in our house because my husband and I met on a movie that had an elephant in it so we had a couple days with this large elephant on this stage and uh, that was the movie movie we met on so when I see elephant things I tend to grab them so I'll probably stitch that um, but for the most part every other issue of this magazine I've gotten has been nothing and it has been my taste although Leticia the peacock um, so I'm not gonna resubscribe um, I also find it annoying that it's only every other issue and then so every time I would look at the coming soon you know in the next issue section of this magazine um, I would then realize that I'm not actually gonna get that issue I'm gonna get the issue after that so um, they seem to come kind of sporadically and they're expensive so I'm not gonna resubscribe to that but um, I will keep I will keep up with my just cross stitch um, what else um, I did some we went on vacation at the beginning of July we went upstate to um, a lake house and I did some thrifting while I was up there and I got a couple things I got this little card kit that has um, ribbon work in it um, and I've never done that so I thought you know buck 50 I'd give it a try I also got <clears throat> a stack of cross stitch and country crafts we got five of them they're 50 cents each I didn't have a chance in the store to sit and look through and only buy ones that had things I wanted to stitch I tried but the store was weird, weirdly busy and um, they had stacks and stacks of these magazines and I didn't possibly have time to go through all of them so I just grabbed ones based on like that had a cover thing that I liked like I like this um, I don't know I like this family tree um, but on second looks at it, maybe not so much. I liked it when I grabbed it. Um, I will not be stitching this baby. <laughs> but there is, there is a few things inside this magazine that I did like um, that I grabbed. Um, like this cheapest design uh, oops. Uh, pattern. There's a little article about them, about Dawn. Um, Oh, and this, this is why I grabbed this magazine. I love that, that winter scene. Reminds me of stuff my grandma used to have in her, in her home. Um, I grabbed this one for this, this bee thing, this bee piece on the front cover. Like I said, super into bees. Oh, I just realized there's like an address there. My bad. Um, sorry. I'm trying to cover that up. Um can't wait to stitch that one and then um, this is like the companion piece to this um, to the bees um, so that was a nice find 50 cents a piece you know most of them have at least a couple things in there that I would like to stitch both small and large um, that I'm really excited about I also was able for 50 cents to grab this leisure arts leaflet um, there's nothing in here I want to stitch. I grabbed it because of the Palavon pattern on the cover um, because I know that a lot of people love and collect Palavon patterns and I thought um, rather than this sitting in a thrift store where those people can't find it, I should grab it and I'll put it on like Stash and Load or eBay or something so that people who are looking for it can have it. Um, I also got this for 50 cents, this prairie schooler pattern um, it's called the four seasons I don't know if I'll ever stitch this 
um, like I was saying, I've got, I really love Prairie Schooler, um, now that I've tried it, <laughs> um, but I don't know, I don't know if I, if little houses are something I want to hang on my wall. It looks like a quick stitch, um, the pattern's in great condition, there's a few marks in the margin, um, I'm not sure if I'll stitch it, I'll probably hang on to it for a while and then decide later on. Um, this one is the one I'm most excited about. This is, um, I don't know what the name of this pattern is. I think it's DMC is what it says on, on the actual pattern that I have. Um, so, oh, that must be her working copy, I see. Okay. Um, so I came across this in a thrift store. This partially done started a small piece of brown Ada. Someone had started stitching this. And um, the needle still in there. Um, and uh, it was in a bag with the, with the pattern and a picture of, of what the pattern looks like and her working copy. Um, I love this. I think it's called Maple Sugar by DMC. Um, at least is what the pattern says. I don't know if this focuses. Um, but I love this because um, I grew up in Ontario where an annual tradition was going to the sugar bush in February. And, uh, you know, seeing where they tap the trees and um, eating fresh maple syrup candy. Like they do this thing where they pour hot maple syrup on clean fresh snow and you like twirl it with a popsicle stick. Um, it's like a lollipop. Um, and looking at the big like cauldrons they had over the fire, of boiling the syrup. Um, we used to do it all the time as a kid. So that really just reminded me of that, of home. Um, and I thought I can't, I can't leave this lady's work in, um, in this thrift store. I gotta take it home and I gotta stitch this. Um, I probably, since the threads aren't with it, and I don't know how old these threads are, and I don't want to deal with color matching, I probably will not continue, um, I will not continue where she left off. I'm going to probably restart it on a, um, on a new piece of fabric, probably like a Lugana or something. Um, I don't have anything against Ada, I just don't really like working with it, so, um, I ordered some things in the picture of this plus sale that I think, um, some colors that I think will make a nice background for that. So that I'm really excited to stitch. I will stitch that this year. Um, it'll be as soon as I can get a rotation spot opening, I'm going to put it in. Um, I did participate in the picture of this plus sale. I obviously won't have those pieces of fabric until much later. I, apparently it takes months to get them. I'm totally fine with that. I got like, I got I think 10 pieces of fabric. Um, and because I had a PayPal gift card for $35, I only actually spent $50 of my own money. Uh, so it's like $5 per piece of fabric, which is amazing. You see this little cattail in the background? Um, I have two little fur monsters. Um, I'm surprised that they haven't been more intrusive. Um, and the last thing I bought this month, oh, second to last thing, first of all, this is amazing. Um, I didn't buy this. I got this for free from work. Um, I, I should probably explain what I do because I keep like alluding to it. I work in the film and TV industry in the props and set dressing department. Um, and the movie I'm on right now, um, one of the sets we were on, I saw this hanging on the wall and I immediately called the set decorator and was like, please tell me that I can have this. Like, I will buy it off you. And she was like, oh my God, you can have it for free. So, um, right, let me see. Um, this, I think, is technically a needlepoint. It looks like there's a canvas underneath. I don't know if this counts as cool work because it's wool, but I believe, let me see. Um, I believe it's needlepoint. Um, the frame, the stitching is in great condition and it's beautiful and it's so well done. The frame is super busted and I am planning on reframing it um, myself. I just need to, I need to get like a poster size frame. 
so the next time I order frames um, or go frame shopping I'm gonna I'm gonna keep the existing mat and uh, just just look to find a poster size frame with no glass that will fit it because I don't want to spend a lot of money on framing it but I love it I love it so much and I can't wait to hang it on our wall my husband hates it he would never tell me so but I can I can tell by his reaction that he hates it but I love it um, and it reminds me of home you know Canadian geese um, so I, that's probably why I love it and I love the colors and I just I don't know I had to rescue it you know what I mean um, probably took somebody years or at least hours and days and weeks and months it took somebody a long time to stitch that and that and it's in good condition and it speaks to me so I just had to have it um, and then the last thing that I bought this month is I subscribed to the color and cotton fabric of the month and uh, floss of the month clubs I won't have those shipments until August so I will show you those when they get in um, and I think I think that's everything so I'm going to clean up this mess around me and um, try and figure out how to edit these 50 million, hi big, um, cat down here, 50 million uh, videos together and put pictures in. Um, and I also need to take a quick nap and do some other things before I go to work. So, um, so that's it. I hope you guys have a great stitchy month. Um, I hope you stay cool. Um, during August uh, or stay warm if you're in the other hemisphere. Um, I hope you um, have a little extra money in your stitch from stash budgets to buy a couple things for yourself and uh, I hope you get a lot of progress on those whips. So, um, you know, if anyone watches this, I will, um, I'll see you again in August. Um, bye guys. Thanks so much.